The weather puts our insulation project on a momentary pause. It is super hot out. We've gotten a random heat wave. So we shift attention to correcting a mistake needed to pass the next inspection. We forgot to put in our hold down devices on this center shear wall. But it's looking like this might not be as easy as we anticipated. Well, it doesn't look too good for us. And not only does this project require a little extra problem solving, but also requires a specialty tool. I got that! <laughs> Follow along to see if we're able to complete our insulation and tie down system. We have all but one piece of insulation in up there. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss a moment of the build. Today, we are tackling something other than insulation. We still have a little bit of insulation to do in our prow front, but it is super hot out. We've gotten a random heat wave in May here in the Pacific Northwest, and it's just really hot if you're up at the roof near the beam, and that's where we need to be. So we only have the afternoon to build today. So we're gonna tackle that part that we were called out on in our inspection. We need to put in four brackets that will connect our stem wall down below the house to our shear wall up above the house. So we're gonna start seeing if we actually have the spots down below, if they're in the right place or not. And if they're not, then it's time to start drilling into concrete so we can attach those correctly. So we're gonna need to move this electrical box here because I think our bracket's gonna go here and then we'll either put a double plate here or here. Okay. And then, you know, the bracket will be right here. Whoa. Okay, we are headed down to our favorite spot. We're going down below the house. Ryan just marked where all of these brackets should go, and we drilled a long screw in. So we're gonna go see where those screws are, and then we're gonna see if they line up with where they actually need to be fitted. I hope that all made sense. Not, not the best of news. Ah. The thing is here, and we were basically saying the bracket would be here. Mm-hmm. That. It's not cool. Yeah, the screw placement is three inches north of the of the all thread. Do they call that O for three so far? Yeah. Do I have the tape measure? You're not gonna need it. This is gonna be right. Yeah, we're one. We're one for. We're one for three. One for one. Well, it doesn't look too good for us. It looks like we're gonna have a little bit of extra work to do. It looks like we might be able to make three of these work. We're gonna have to check with our inspector first to make sure we can make our two outside ones work with the all thread that has already been placed into our stem wall. One, we knew we were going to have to drill a new hole for, and we have a super long drill bit for that. And we do have to have that hole inspected before we can put epoxy into it. So right now we are actually tracing one spot where we know we're gonna be able to put one of those brackets and tie into the all thread that is already in place. So we're gonna to try to get one of them placed today. We'll hear back from the inspector on the other two, then we'll have to do that drilling. We got one of those brackets all in place. We don't have it all connected just yet because we have to go get our kids from school. We're gonna go do that and we may get it connected this evening, but otherwise now we know what we're up against with those brackets that we have to put into place. Did it poke out the other side? No. I don't see it. Hmm. 
So today we have a couple of goals and one of them is to get some more progress done on this very last bit of insulation we need to complete before we can call for that inspection. And if you'll remember, we forgot to put in our hold down devices on this center shear wall. So I had a question out to the inspector because those hold down devices say they require to be installed into a double stud, but our installation at the ends here, the studs go into our log return wall. So we either were gonna have to drill new holes for everyone and put in a second stud, or I asked the inspector and he said, as long as we do a stitch pattern into that stud, into the log wall, then, that, then we can install the hold down against that stud. So I'm gonna get busy. I'm gonna put some nails into that cavity and then that way we can start working on getting a couple more hold downs done. Get ready to call for inspection. All right, Sarah's heading down below and we've got this section for our hold down all set up. We got our all thread cut and our bracket ready. The all thread that's down below the house is slightly offset. So we're hoping that there's enough play in the bracket and in the all thread that we can make this work. So Sarah should be hollering at me any second and we'll see if we can get this to work. You're almost there. All right, I think it's your final screw on this one. Last one. Hey, and then we have to figure out a way to tighten these down. I feel like our house isn't going anywhere now. <laughs> At least this side. Something about. Something about going back and forth. That sheer, was the shear. Shear forces. I don't know. I don't know either. It's blue. Simpson just wanted some money. We're on our third bracket that is going on. This will be the last one we can put on before we have to drill into our concrete stem wall below. Do you happen to remember? that about three episodes ago, I talked about this stem wall down below the house and me and Ryan were saying, we don't understand why it's here. This is why it exists. And I wish we would have realized that, you know, like two years ago. Oh. Okay, is this like a lot in your life after this? Uh, I don't know. That looks pretty good. And then if I just keep it like centered with the two by six, I feel like that should be pretty good. You wanna? Go down below? Yeah, see where it's hitting the stem wall? Yep. So Sarah is heading down below. I have our brand new Bosch hammer saw that has the special SDS plus connection and this massive 32 inch bit because we don't have, we have zero clearance to access the stem wall down below and it has to go down 15 inches into the stem wall and the gap from the top plate down to the top plate on the stem wall is 13 inches. So this is the only way I could think to do it without having, to, I don't know, it's the only way I could think to do it. So we're hoping that everything goes smoothly and this drill works like a charm. Okay, go. Okay, I just came from down below and we had to bore out the hole on the top of the top plate underneath because our concrete bit sucks at going through wood. So that's bored out now. Now we're gonna try boring this hole down one more time.
I don't know what happened. It's like the bit is slipping. Is it just hitting rebar, probably? I'm thinking. Rebar, bane of my existence. I think you've gotten a lot lower. It Not does, a lot lower, it, but. It does look like I've made some progress. It looks like you've gotten a rebar's worth lower. Yeah, maybe. Tell the people what you learned at lunchtime. I don't know that I learned anything, except for that maybe we should have a four cutting blade bit instead of a two for going through rebar. And other than that, give persistence and give some consistent pressure and go on a medium speed and use some water. So, so that's what we're trying. That's what we're trying. Cause we don't want to buy a new bit. I think we did it! Yay! I'm gonna use this drill bit so many times. Like any time we need to drill through, it's yeah. like, oh, oh no, I got, I got that. <laughs> we need to do, like I was talking about, oh, we need to do a one and a half inch into this rock so we can build this structure in our garden. Oh, go hit the drill bit. It'd be hilarious. We are in the final stages of doing the insulation in our roof. We have one bay to do that runs all the way across the front of our house in the prow. I believe that's what we're gonna be starting with today. And then we also have two half bays that need to be filled at the very top of our stairs right there. So both of these spots are a little challenging for various reasons, but mainly because they're just up really high and we have obstacles in the way to get to them. However, I think we have a game plan in place for both areas. Fingers crossed they both work and it would be so awesome if we were done with this because yesterday we did get that hole finally drilled to the 15 inch depth and then we can call back the inspector. He can check our roof insulation and check that hole depth and we can just keep this build moving forward. Close my eyes a lot when I film Ryan up high. Well, this is like, yeah, this is how it's supposed to work. Which would make that. Perfect. Another one for you. Good morning, little 
morning chunkers. Hi girls. Hi. Hi. I don't have anything for you today. All right, good morning guys. As you know, Sarah and I have been pushing to try to get this insulation finalized so we can call for our inspection because then we get to start putting up some walls on the interior and it'll start making it look like a house. But before that, as you'll remember, when we had our inspection, we neglected to put some hold downs down. We got those hold downs in place, but I neglected to cut the all thread out at the right height and I can't get a wrench in to tighten those off. So real quick this morning, I need to take the Sawzall and cut those down by about an inch and then I can put the correct nuts on and they'll be all locked down tight and that'll be ready for inspection. So here we go. All right, got that one cut down, one left to go. All right, while I was cutting that off in place, the piece of all thread came disconnected from the coupler. So I have to go back down underneath the house and get that connected. All right, I got that all thread back connected. Now time to go put the hold down back in place. I'm just gonna put a couple of turns with the socket onto this hold down and it'll be ready for inspection. All right, Sarah just got back from dropping off the kids and she went by the post office. And actually we had the part that I was needing to finish up those hold downs. Uh, the area we need to secure the screws into is a really tight fit. So I needed this little right angle adapter so that I can screw in the screws because my drill won't fit back in that area. So I'm gonna go get that knocked out really quick and then we'll be as far as we can go on all these hold downs. Ryan just finished up the hold down brackets and now we are going to get on to our last two spots where we need to get insulation. Ryan chose to go up high on the extension ladder to get these bays filled first. So that's where we're headed. Follow along. we were talking about is leaning it up against the beam. Yeah. I didn't catch a lot of us on camera for this section above the stairs because I was holding the ladder. Ryan was in a really awkward position, but we have all but one piece of insulation in up there. We're gonna see if we can reach it from the scaffolding once we get that over there. And otherwise we're gonna have to get creative. We actually got those pieces up and into that space that we needed to up above the stairs. And then Ryan got up and did a little piece of the furring strip that we needed to get done right behind me here past our scaffolding. And now Ryan's gonna be hopping up onto this scaffolding. So hopefully we can get in the last furring strip piece that we need to, and then start finishing this insulation project. Uh, yeah, I needed to see if I could uh, schedule an inspection for Tucson. Okay. No, nope, that's it. I appreciate it. All right, you too. Ready? Scheduled for Tuesday. All right, we better get this done. Ryan just called for inspection so we can get this roof insulation checked. That will actually be on Tuesday next week, which gives us 
one more day where we work on the build, but if we need some time on the weekend, we'll be able to use it. It should be a pretty straightforward inspection. I see no reason why we're not gonna pass our insulation inspection, and they are going to also be checking that 15 inch hole that we bore into the concrete stem wall. are back and we are going to be working on the final pieces of insulation that we need to do and a few furring strips. We really don't have too many things to do. We just actually went up and flipped around the scaffolding and got the guardrails back onto the other side so we can send Ryan over, get those furring strips in and those last pieces of insulation and we have an inspection scheduled for tomorrow. So here we go. Hey Ryan, are we done with insulation? Oh, we're done with insulation. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Inspection's coming tomorrow and I think we're gonna pass. Yeah, I think we're gonna pass too. The big thing really that we're having checked is that hole that we had to drill into our stem wall. They have to verify that we had it down 15 inches. Yep, and then as long as that's good, and then we get that other bracket in, we'll pass framing and we'll pass insulation. We'll yeah. have to get that other bracket in first. But big things are coming. We are so close to putting up our first pieces of shiplap. And then comes mini splits. I know, and that means built-in air conditioning. Air conditioned house, workspace. While we build this summer, we're, we're moving on up. Yeah, we're building in style. All right. <laughs> 